All right, so now I'm finally trying the brand new 9980XE on LN2. So uh, uh, it has already been uh, tested before by Wins or Kimpin, so uh, it should be doing very, very good. I'm hoping it can really challenge the top guys like Splay, Big Block, and so on at the top. So uh, we are using exactly the same setup as before, so X299 Dark. Four Samsung BDI sticks, which will be running at like 3800 to 4000 plus. 12, 11, 11 at voltages ranging from 1.85 to over 2 volts. Superflower 2000 watt uh, power supply. Inferno backplate, T Rex container, Kimping cooling KPX thermal paste. And also, if you look carefully, you can see that I'm not using uh, springs this time between the uh, aluminium extension and the uh, uh, thumb nuts. So, uh, someone said, or Ralph said, that. The way to avoid crack, especially in the uh, Skylake Refresh CPUs, is to not use springs and really tighten these down, even with pliers if needed be. So uh, as these are very uh, big, these thumb nuts, it's very easy to crank them down very, very tight. So uh, I'm not using springs this time, so I'm hoping I can avoid crack this way. And uh, yeah, just I'll, use, I'll run the benching in Windows 7, Server 2012, and uh, GPU Pi must be running in uh, Windows 10. So uh, I think without further ado, we can get started. A lot of fumes. And I have the uh, Inferno backplate running on the secondary power supply. So uh, it, when I have, I have just connected the 24 pin together. So I'll just flip the switch and it will turn on just like that. So I think we can just start at 54 again. Should be easy, I think I'll just go 55. 55. 38 on the mesh, as the mesh should be doing extremely good on this chip. Extreme cooling mode enabled, extreme voltage mode enabled. 2.15 on the input. 1.4. Three on the vehicle and one, one point four five on the V mesh. Disabled uh, V droop, so load line calibration is enabled. Same on SA and IO. IO can be higher, like one point three five, four fifty on the internal system agent, and it doesn't really differ that much in other ways. Now, once the temperature is right, I will F10, save and exit, and I'll get into the OS where we can actually test the CPU.
All right, so now we are in the OS. Uh, apparently, this uh, CPU has very good gold pack, uh, gold pack, like nothing that we have seen before on any chip, so like minus 120. So I'll be testing this out. So now uh, approaching 110, mouse still moves. 115 still moves. Yeah, still moves. One hundred sixteen, still moving. Nineteen. Now one twenty and still moves. One twenty and still moves. And it locked at one twenty-two. Of course, it goes colder now when uh, it has uh, locked. But uh, yeah, so one twenty-two is the cold pack temperature. So that's something really, really amazing. That gives us more headroom than if compared to if it was only at like minus 95 or around minus 100. So this is very good. Okay, so now I'm in the OS at 5.5. I think it should be very easy to pass this with correct temperature. So now it's just going 110 and so on. So let's try. Five five twenty six, very very easy. And I think it, this score is also very all right. So uh, we will just push from here. And yeah, it, 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 it's too impossible to really uh, film uh, effectively and still bench at, at the best possible speeds at the same time. So I just have to uh, like go through the results that I might get with you when the bench is over. So yeah, so that is, uh, well, it's still the, uh, it's still a rank three uh, score on the GPU by 1 billion at 5.8 gigahertz. Time is 52 seconds, 0.523, so I'm still trying. So uh, I still didn't avoid the uh, crack. I, uh, I've been doing that, I when I crack, I heat up and then I tighten the thumb nuts down. I mean, I tighten the thumb nuts more with pliers. I think it helps a bit. So now I've been benching quite a bit and it's not, it hasn't cracked. So now I'll try 5.9 and see if it's stable. So the top score is like one second away, a bit under one second. Yeah, not having that much luck over here. So that's almost sub one second. W prime 32 at 5.8 gigahertz. I have some weird issues when I uh, finish a benchmark. It will uh, like uh, shut or I mean it will start post process again. So it's some like it's like IMC related thing. I don't know. But anyway, so. Uh, the CPU is good, it does skip bench free at 5.8 GHz and uh, GPU Pi between 5.8 and 5.9, so it's very good. Cinebench, I think the maximum is 5.75 to 5.8, but it requires time, so yeah. Might not get the best scores, but at least the CPU is good. Yeah, this CPU is definitely not easy to handle, so that's the uh, almost ranked one on the W Prime 1024 amp, so 24.612. Rank one is 24.523, I think. So I'll push more. I'm sure I'll get it. But yeah, this is extremely hard CPU to handle. 5828, 5826C, yeah, something like that. So the CPU is definitely good. So the uh, platform is definitely harder to uh, control than, I, what I, what, than what I originally thought. So uh, it seems now that I have managed to uh, bypass the uh, cracking, at least mostly based on the uh, die uh, temperature on LED but uh, I'm not sure if the pot is too tight against the CPU and causes some issues with like memory like IMC that uh, because I have some weird issues after like minus 115 that uh, it gets some memory instability issue then it, then it uh, forces some uh, it forces re a reboot of the post process so I'm not sure what's uh, going on but overall the CPU is very good, but uh, this is definitely the only way to bypass the cracking uh, mostly by tightening the pot really hard against the CPU. So uh, the last attempt on the 9980XC went quite well. The most important thing I got was that I learned how to prevent 
the thermal paste crack on top of the CPU IHS. So it really is so that when you just go tighter and tighter on the CPU pot thumb nuts, after some some point it will make the CPU thermal paste not to crack anymore. So every time I cracked in the beginning, I would always just uh, when I heated the pot back up, I would just tighten the thumb nuts more and more every time with pliers uh, like this. And after a few times, when I went like, when I went like a few rounds on each uh, thumb nut, after, after like three times, after three tightenings, uh, it didn't crack anymore. So I could just bench endlessly in various benchmarks. So it went really well after that. The CPU is definitely good. I had some efficiency issues in uh, uh, mainly Geekbench 3 and smaller in uh, uh, GPU Pi 1 billion, but the CPU is definitely good. So it did 5.8 on Geekbench 3 quite easily. So I will try that, try that again. And uh, like 5.8 something on GPU Pi. Cinebench also seems doable at 5.8 plus, but it's extremely hard to control temperature wise, as you would guess. But I will try my best again, as this is mostly about fun in the end anyways. But of course we want to get the best possible uh, results. But yeah. I will, I will start to cool down again now, and I will see what happens. So, I just got a new bar, so this is like an improved or updated version of the uh, uh, May 2018 bars from 2018. So this has just some tweaks on uh, uh, for memory. But uh, this is based on exactly the same original BIOS, so I'll just go straight to 5.7, 40 on the mesh, 2.25 on the input, 1.48 on the V-Core. This is kind of the max you can use, like, uh, realistically, where it, where it stops scaling, I mean. 1.45 on uh, B-Mesh, 1.35 on I.O., 450 on internal system agent offset. Memory is 3800 plus 1.88 volts, but 12, 11, 10, 21, and then some really tight sub timings. So, uh, this is quite good in uh, Geekbench and similar. So, I'll just wait for the temperature to get right and I will go. It's minus 73 now. So, when it's 100, I will press F10. I'll go straight to Windows 10, 10 this time and uh, try the uh, Geekbench first, then GPU Pi. Alright, so now very simple Geekbench run at 5.7 and look at that memory score. 11,200, absolutely insane. It's by far the highest memory score I've ever seen in uh, Geekbench 3 and on this platform. So I need to push more, 10,038. So I'll, now I'll set 5.8 is quite on the edge, or 100,038 of course. So 5.7 on the core, 4,000 on the cache or mesh. Okay, so now I'll try more. And I cracked. Even when I went really tight with the thumb nuts, it just shows uh, very bad temperature at uh, known CPU pot temperature now. So now I will heat up and when, when I heat up, I like I will also tighten the thumb nuts more, so I will just load uh, my water profile and uh, start looping Cinebench and uh, just use heat gun. CPU temperature must hit uh, like plus 20 to 30. Now I'm uh, doing uh, minus 30 on the pot, so when I, it's like minus 20, that's enough. So now the cores are already like, yeah, plus 15, plus 20, so I will stop the heat gun now. 
and just uh, let this pass, then I will shut down and I will tighten the thumb nuts with the pliers. So, here's, the, here's a Geekbench free score at uh, 5.8, as you can see in CPU-Z. Same voltages, so same input, same vehicle, 4 gig on the mesh, 11,205 on the mem, mem score, so total score is 1,703, 1, so I think this is rank 2 scores, play at 104k, so I'm still working on it. But yeah. Alright, so that's the rank 2 score in X265 4K in the 18 core category with the 9980XE running at 5.6 GHz, 4 on the mesh, and 3812, 11, 10, 21 timings. 2250 on the input and 1.46 on the V core, so uh, quite close on the rank 1, but rank 2 was fairly easy. So, yeah. Alright, so that's the end of my uh, uh, multiple day 9980XE LN2 session. So, I did various I did many different mounts uh, on the CPU and, and I can confirm that my uh, uh, thought or theory was right. So you can make the CPU uh, thermal paste crack free by going really tight on the thumb nuts with pliers, but there's real risk involved. So uh, uh, when you do that, you risk that the CPU bends uh, over time. So uh, as the CPU is not supported in the middle of the socket, it's supported at the corners. So when you when you put a lot of pressure with the thumb nuts, it will make the CPU bend a little bit. It's like the corners will uh, raise up from the uh, level where the uh, middle or the center of the PCB is. So uh, now, if I go too tight on the thumb nuts, the uh, whole rig will start posting due to some memory issue. Like I get like EE debug code on the LED, or just some channel stops posting or so on. So. Uh, now it's extremely hard to beat my old scores uh, due to that, so uh, that's a little bit sad. But anyways, I had to do it. The uh, I definitely got the best possible contact, like th I mean, like thermal contact when I really went tight. So uh, the overall uh, overclockability was the best when I had the CPU pot really tight against the CPU. So uh, the frequency I managed to push this uh, 18 core uh, was like up to 5.85. Uh, in multi-core benchmarks like W Prime, Geekbench, and so on. So I got rank two score in W Prime 1024M, and also in Geekbench three. Uh, I got rank three score in GPU by one billion. I had some small effici uh, efficiency issue, issue there. I'm not fully sure what's up. Then uh, rank, very, very solid rank two in uh, X265 4K. But anyways, it's extremely hard to beat that scores by Splave as uh, this is kind of real CPU race between uh, uh, different manufacturers so this whole this overall platform is extremely hard to control due to the high loads of these multi-core CPUs so even rank 2 is very very good and all, even I mean even going to 5.85 with an 80 core CPU is also very very nice result so uh, in that way I'm very very happy but just my personal opinion is that you shouldn't risk too much by going too tight with the uh, pliers on the thumb nuts because uh, even I see in Splave's post that even he uses springs so yeah it's a lot of time and LM2 consuming that when you always have to heat back uh, heat back up and then go back cold so uh, but it's less risky so uh, yeah. now it's so hard for me to beat my old scores so uh, that's a little bit sad so uh, I would just use springs and uh, try to get uh, a very nice tight, uh, tight mount with that way, but uh, this is a bit too risky to go like this, but anyways. So uh, that's the end of my uh, LM2 session, so I will post the scores at HWBot and uh, I will see uh, what comes in the coming weeks. So uh, Cascade, Lake, Cascade Lake X is coming and it has some improvements, so uh, that, that CPU will take down the uh, scores by these Skylake X CPUs anyway, so uh, even if I had got the record scores now with this chip, they wouldn't have lasted that long. So uh, that's the overall conclusion about this. So yeah, but anyways, this is the end. So uh, again, I hope you liked to see this video and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.